Let's consider the implications either way. Either there is extraterrestrial intelligence or not. What would the theists say if ultimately we are alone? They'd be pretty happy, right? Well, if we are alone, that's the scenario that's been worked out over the last several thousand years by theologians. Uh, uh, if you take uh, just uh, Christianity, for example, there's no problem with the doctrine of the Incarnation. Humans are the center of the universe. Uh, Christ could have saved them, and, and, and it's no problem. And we're special because God created us here or allowed circumstances for us to evolve here, whatever. Exactly. Now, what if there are multitudes of extraterrestrial intelligence? Then what do theologians do? Well, if there are many extraterrestrials out there, uh, that opens another whole series of questions. Uh, then, uh, and, and again, these depend very much on each theology or each religion will be affected in different ways. This is not a monolithic question. Uh, that question has been discussed over the last five centuries uh, in the Christian theology, uh, and in particular in connection with the Incarnation, because with the Incarnation, of course, uh, that uh, has been developed as a terrestrial kind of phenomenon where you have a single phenomenon where Christ died on, on the earth to save humans. Once. Once. If uh, you have extraterrestrials, then you get into a scenario, well, either that Christ, uh, by dying on the earth, was somehow able to save everybody in the universe, which seems unlikely, or that you have a planet-hopping savior who has to hop around every time there's an Adam and an Eve on another planet. And keep living and dying all over again. Exactly. Which has some internal contradictions. Yes, the theologians wouldn't like that either. Or the third possibility is that there's another way to salvation on other planets other than through Christ, and that's a whole other kind of problem. Yes. It opens uh, all kinds of interesting questions, which I think uh, you know uh, uh, should be addressed, and probably would enrich enrich current theologies in any case. And it would be different for different theologies. Hindu or Buddhist philosophy may have a different reaction to it. Exactly. The uh, the some of the Eastern religions that don't have this sort of one to one relationship with a godhead would not have as much difficulty, I think, as as uh, religions such as uh, Judaism and Christianity. Now let's look at the result from an atheistic point of view. If we have multiple intelligence in the universe, I think atheists would use it as confirmation of their position that there is no specialness to humanity and therefore probably no God. Well, I'm not sure that uh, extraterrestrial life uh, says much uh, in, f in favor or, or, or against atheism. Uh, if uh, I mean, an, an atheist doesn't necessarily uh, uh, think that uh, that extraterrestrial life proves uh, his position. I don't. I don't think. I don't see why why that would be a proof of the position. It's a lot less trouble for an atheist than it is for a theist. <laughs> right, I would say right, that. <laughs> right. Well, I think an atheist would probably say that uh, uh, this shows that humanity is nothing special about human beings, and this very special relationship that God was supposed to have right. is really not as special as you guys thought. Well, I think the bottom line is that as we go about our daily lives, you know, uh, doing the various things that we do, uh, and even in a larger sense, uh, you know, with wars and everything that's happening on the earth, the discovery of extraterrestrial intelligence would put all of this in perspective. It would really raise uh, the level of discussion to a new level. And that's one of the reasons why extraterrestrial uh, life, the, the question of extraterrestrial life is so important, it would force us to uh, rethink so many of uh, our basic ideas.